Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the textured wheel bag and this is my own design but I will tell you this is a Catherine wheel stitch with a bit of a Mikey air when I was 14 years of age. So I want to tell you a little bit of a back end story on how this is to be because this is not technically the Catherine wheel stitch even though for 20 years I thought it was. So for those that like stories here's a story for you if you don't like stories just fast forward. So how this came to be is that I was 14 years of age my mom taught me to do a double crochet in a chain. Really quite bored with it so I went out and bought my first pattern book and I was 14 years of age. So I'm not a strong reader but I could read the actual diagrams because I could follow the shapes that you see. So this will be provided to you later. So what I was doing is that I was reading the instructions in diagram format and what I had failed to do is that in the Catherine wheel stitch when you go to do one of these wheels you start off and you do three single crochets or three chains then you do the wheel and then three chain again. Now when I did this when I was a kid I did not see that the, when you start a wheel that you actually have to chain first and then begin the wheel. So what's happened here is that when I did this I loved this design and had no idea for 20 years that I was misunderstanding the Catherine wheel stitch until I actually started the crochet crowd. I actually figured it out almost three years ago. It's not been that long since I've been doing it right. So what's happened here is that because I omitted the three chains it causes the wheel to buckle and as a kid because you're looking at it and there's no internet at this time is that you look straight down it's like yeah that looks like the picture and you keep on going. But what happens with this because I failed to put that three single crochets and then start the bottom it causes texture to happen. So there's actually texture in this bag. So the wheels are wanting to lift off and because I had loved it so much I have done many afghans and scarves with this particular stitch because I failed to understand that you had to chain uh, three and then out. So if you chain three then do the bottom wheel and then chain three again what happens is that it sits completely flat. How boring is that right? So this is my adaptation for that and uh, this is how this came to be. So this is my 14 year old self up until um, almost to my 40 years of age that I realized that I was doing the Catherine wheel stitch wrong. So let's uh, take you uh, to what we're going to be doing today and then we're gonna get started on the bag. So as we get started on the bottom of the bag we're just going to start off with the chain work. We have our multiples of 10 so there is actually in this particular pattern is that there is um, a total of 100 chains going all the way around and we're gonna work away in a continuous circle. Now there's a trick to doing the Catherine wheel stitch to have the texture in a circle is that when you come around you have to stop and go back in the other direction and then stop and then back around again. So what's happening here is that in order to have the good side and the, and the bad side facing you at all times to create the buckle you have to go in that particular motion. So you will notice that there is no seam lines no matter how I turn it. And the fact is is that I went in a continuous circle going back and forth. So I did not want to create a whole panel and then have it sewn that was a really awful join. Um, I did not want this for this particular design. So what I'm going to be providing you today is the instructions to be able to do this. Now here's the neat thing about this particular one. Each one of these wheels is the ex exact same instruction. So in the bottom part of the wheel you're going to go when we do the bottom you're going to go and it's gonna be the wrong side. So you're looking at the wrong side of the wheel and when you do the top side you're going in the other direction looking at the right side of the wheel. So it's wrong side, right side, wrong side, right so it's always the same. Here's the thing is that the yarn when we go to transition up there's really definitely no seam line. So when we go to finish a, a wheel we start and then we move to a position that makes sense. So when you start a uh, stop wheel probably be right there and when you start the next one you are going to be probably right here. So what I want you to do is concentrate on your seam line being in the same position. It will not be straight up it'll be diagonal just like you see here. So I've already cut my strands on the, on the back end so I really can't prove that to you. So I'm gonna have a diagram available for you. Let's take a look at that and that's in, in, uh, involved in the pattern too. So I know this is a long introduction. The Catherine wheel stitch is actually a really fabulous stitch but unfortunately it's not one you can explain in two seconds. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do our chain and it's in multiples of 10. I've got a hundred on here and I'm using a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook with my Bernat uh, Maker Home Deck yarn. So we're going to go, I want you to notice these arrows here. So one is the right side, two is the right side. 
just like you see. So remember what I told you is that the wheels are made up of the wrong side, right side, wrong side, right side. So whenever you do the underside of the wheel, you're going in this direction. So you're just gonna turn your project and go in the other direction and then when you get to here, you're going to have your right side then going on top of the wheel. So it's wrong side is under, right side is over. And if you can understand that. So remember what I said is that when I was a kid I was missing the chain threes that are in the beginning. So these circles are technically not a circle. They're kind of buckling over which creates the look of the texture of this particular bag. So you'll notice that the chain threes are missing. Now I'm not gonna say that I'm a pattern wizard and when I was 14 years of age that I was like the superhero of crochet. I misread in the instructions and I did it for 20 years like this and it works and you have the texture to prove how fabulous it can be. I know from this angle you really can't see it but you'll see it when you go to do this example. So what I want to concentrate on is that we're gonna get ourselves started. So each wheel is the same color so when we look at this particular project we see that the half that you have right in the beginning is the half here and then the first wheel is, uh, is aqua. So cream aqua. So let's uh, just uh, take a look at it from a, uh, a wider perspective. So you're going to have your half and then aqua, cream, aqua, cream, aqua, cream, aqua, cream, aqua and then you're gonna finish with a full circle on the top. So you should have a total of five and a half of these half wheels for cream. So one, two, three, four, five and a half. And in the aqua there should be one, two, three, four, five. Now I put the handles as being white. So what's gonna happen, that's how much yarn you're gonna be left with. So I, as I start today's example with you to get yourself started, I'm going to start with the aqua first because I don't have enough yarn of this in order to continue to show you how to do this. So remember it's in multiples of 10. And so I think I'm gonna shut up now and let's get going. You can download all the information and including this diagram if it helps you over in the more information in this video. So let's begin our starting chain. It's right here in the base just like this. This is the bottom of the bag. It's in a continuous circle and then when we're done to finish off the bottom we're gonna turn it around and just finish it. So I'm going to use Aqua to, to be my start. You're going to chain 100 and I'm gonna just do a small sample just to show you how these uh, wheels work with each other and then we're gonna get going. So grab your six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook, your Bernat Maker Home Deck yarn and let's begin to start. So let's begin. You're going to chain 100 and I'm just going to do a total of 30 because I want to just show you a small sample. So you just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Go all the way to 100 for me and if you want to make it bigger just keep it in multiples of 10. If you want to go smaller keep multiples of 10. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Once you get your 100 on here I have a total count of 30. Just make sure you do not uh, twist the chain at all and put the first chain on and then yarning over pulling it through and through. So I just got a small little bag here. Could be a cell phone bag for all I know at this moment. So let's begin our first round. So we're gonna chain up one and I want you to turn so that you get the back hump of the chain. So just the back strand just like you see and what I want you to do is I want you to single crochet in the first one which is the back hump of the chain and then just once you do the first one the next back hump should pop out for you. Okay, so just single crochet in the back hump of each one of the chains and the reason why I'm asking you to do that is that you'll have to crochet along this edge in the future when you're going to finish the bottom of the bag. So if you put it into the right stitches now it'll be a lot easier. So one single crochet in the back hump of the stitch. So I'm coming all the way back around. You should have a total count of 100 uh, the single crochets in my case there's, is 30. So just join it to the top of the first one. So you're looking at the right side of the project right now so I want you to pay attention to that. So the very first, uh, the second row we're going to go on the right side. So we're going to do a half moon over. So remember when it's the upper shell in this particular one it's always gonna be in the right side when you're looking at it and you'll be able to identify this a lot easier in the future. So what we're going to do to start is that you're going to single crochet and in the same stitch I want you to place a single crochet and then two of its friends next door. So just moving across the next one and the next one. So there's three single crochets in a row. Now what I want you to do is that I want you to skip over uh, three single crochets. So one, two, three and go to the fourth and I want you to double crochet a total of seven times in that one. So let's do that. So one, two, three 
chain four. And five. Six and seven. So there's your half moon. This is your upper shell. So you're going to skip the next stitch, which is right here. It's almost partially covered. So skip one, two, three, four. And so go to the fourth one here and single crochet into that one plus two more. So that one plus the next one plus the next one. So these upper shells are separated by these single crochets that are spaced out from the where the center line is here. So let's begin another shell. So skip three. So one, two, and three. Go to the fourth and immediately double crochet a total of seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So how many are we gonna skip to move on? You're gonna skip three. So one, two, three, go to the fourth and how many single crochets in a row? The answer is three. So that is a common thing with this pattern. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get close to the other side to the other edge. So to finish off around, so you're just gonna keep on going until you get to the size that you had and then skipping three, go to the fourth and double crochet in four times. So this is the, so this would be the final one if you were going all the way around. So if you're not here yet, just put me on hold and just wait. Uh, I'll wait for you, just put me on hold. And for those that are continuing on, just keep on going. So there's five, six, and seven. Now, if your math is right, you're going to skip three. So one, two, three. This is not a stitch. This is part of the first one. So one, two, and three. And so that's it. So you're just gonna slip stitch then to the beginning single crochet and you're technically done. So what I need you to do is that I need you to cut this yarn. Now in the sample I tried carrying it up and it looks like sin. So don't even bother. So just cut the yarn and what I want you to do is just weave it in to the stitch work. So just weave it in and you'll catch this underneath the next um, row when you're going to do it. So we're still looking at the right side of the project and because we just finished the upper shell that means that it's the right side. So let's get our next yarn color up and let's begin and show you how to do that. So we just finished here. So I want you to turn the project now and I want you to crochet this way. Okay, so we're looking at now the inside of the bag and we're gonna go in this direction. So we're going in the wrong side to do this. Let's grab our new color. In this case it'll be cream. Create a slip knot just to lock it into position. So what I want you to do is that I want you to count to the third double crochet. So this is one, two, and three. So the third one is where I want you to join it. And we're gonna do the underside of the shell. So the lower shell. So we're gonna join it, chain one, and I want you to single crochet into that same one and single crochet into the next two as well. So one and two. So now I want you to just put these stragglers on the inside of the project and you'll get, you'll deal with those later. So this is the inside that you're looking at. So remember what I said, I kinda screwed up when I was 14. So this is what it will look like without chaining three first. So you're just going to wrap the hook and going into the next one. You're going to pull through and pull through two and hold. So you need to do that seven times so that there's eight loops on the hook. So wrapping, going into the next one, pull through, pull through two and hold it. Wrap, next one, pull through, pull through two and hold. And keep doing that till you get eight loops on your hook and you're repeating that a total of seven times. So let's give that a look so I can see seven. So how I look at that really quickly from my own perspective, I've been doing this for more years than I can imagine. I kinda just like put my finger on the fourth one and I look immediately, is there four there? Yes. So there's a total of seven of these plus the starting one which gives you eight. So once you have that eight, yarn over, pull through all of them. 
So now you're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. So you immediately jump to the next one. So the next three in a row are going to go single crochets. And then you start doing the lower shell once again. You're going to notice it's gonna start buckling on you. That's, that's the texture at work. So let's begin the next one. So just immediately start the lower shell. So wrap, next one, pull through, pull through two and hold it. And keep doing that until you get how many loops on your hook. Can you tell me that answer? If you said eight, it's the right answer. If you said anything else, go grab a cookie. You might need some more sugar. <laughs> so let's continue to go and you're looking for eight. So let me just, I haven't been counting. So I put my finger down on the fourth and I look and there's four more left after that. So I know it's done. So yarning over pulling it through all of those and then chain three. So one, two, three. Jumped immediately to the next one plus two more in a row. That's your three single crochets again. And then you're gonna eventually come around all the way to the end. So let's finish off what it will look like at the end. So if you're not there yet, just put me on hold. For those that are ready to continue, let's go. So you're just gonna wrap and you're gonna do another lower shell. I strategically had you start on the third stitch up on a, on a, a, a wheel so that it was easier for you to begin to stop and start. And it looks more seamless too. So I'm kind of running out of stitches. And let's just do a quick count. So four and four, so I'm done. So you see, I finished right on the uh, one just before this. So yarning over, pulling and chain three. So one, two, three, and then slip stitch to the first single crochet. See, so now you have the lower shell done. So turn your work and let's begin the next row. So the next one that we're going to have is that we immediately, we do not chain one at all. We're just gonna immediately start and we're going to put seven double crochets right into the center of this lower shell. So let's just start that. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. Once you get your seven, immediately jump to the three single crochets and fill those in with single crochets. So one, two, and three. And then do that upper, upper wheel again. So the upper uh, shell, so there's seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Just like that. Once you get your seven, jump to immediately to the next three single crochets and keep doing that all the way around. So you'll notice that the shells are completing the textured wheel. Okay, so if, if you're coming all the way around and it's the end now, so you just continue to go So technically on camera I've shown you how to do the lower wheel and the upper wheel but what I want to do is that I want you to show, I wanna show you where to start one more time and then I'm going to leave the rest of the body of the bag with you to get your homework done and then meet me at the top of the bag. So you notice I haven't been counting but it's easy to count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So when you come back all the way around you, you have three single crochets left when it's the upper wheel and then slip stitch to the first double crochet that you had. Do not, this is the chain that you had in the lower wheels. That's, that's not it, it's this one right here. It's the first double crochet and then fasten off. Just like that and then hide in your loose ends and then you start with the lower wheel one more time. And then, and then do the upper wheel the same color, then fasten off and start again. So what I want you to do is that I want to show you some tricks on where to start then the next time. So what I like to do is that I like to leave the strands in on the back end so I know where to go. So you're going to notice in the instructions that I have you going up like this. 
because I want you to keep the seam line kind of like directly in the middle. So when you go to fold this bag over, you don't see any seams. So what I want you to do is when you're looking at this, let's see where we finished. See how we finished here? Okay. So what I want you to do is that I've already turned it on the inside. So I'm just going to start on the third stitch up to start the lower wheel. So let's begin to do that. And we're looking at the inside of the project if I haven't said that already. So we're looking at the inside. Just look where I finished off. So one, two, go to the third and just attach. Chain one and single crochet that one plus the next two. So you have your three in a row again. Then favor the yarn strand to be on the inside and then you're going to start the lower shell. So just yarning over and start collecting. You need a total of eight loops on your hook. So you're doing seven uh, crochet, uh, double crochet together technically. This is the lower shell as described in the pattern. You can, if it's easier for you, you can fold and like you can like pop it out in and like this and like this. I just found that it's just easier to kind of pay attention to what is your right side and what is your wrong side. So the wrong side is the inside of the bag. So there is my uh, eight. Pull through all of them and then chain three. So one, two, three. Come to the next three stitches on the wheel and put single crochets in. So there's three in a row and then start the next wheel. So hopefully you're understanding this pattern by now. It's actually not a hard pattern. I, I loved it when I was a kid. I still love it today. The Catherine Wheel Stitch is probably my lifetime favorite of stitches of all. Um, it's, it seems like it, it just looks awesome when it's done. So you got uh, four, uh, four and four so it gives you eight. Pull through all of them. Chain three. So one, two, three. The next three in a row are single crochets. One, two, three, and then the lower wheel is gonna finish you off. So at the end of your round, just make sure you put all your stragglers on the inside. It helps you keep it organized too. So just start collecting. And how many loops are you looking to have on your hook? You're looking to have a total of eight. The nice thing about the Catherine wheel stitch and this particular one is that even if you're off by like maybe you had nine here, you can literally grab them because the center point is all gonna be the same. Like so even if you're screwing up towards the end of a project, uh, an end of a wheel and say you maybe miss something, it's an easy fix. So you have your, so I can see that I had an extra one here. I happen to be talking about that and I did it. So you can see though all stitches are filled in so it doesn't really matter because I can pull through all of them. Chain three, one, two, three and this still has the same center point. And then just join it to the first single crochet. Now turn your work and then go back in the other direction. So immediately do not chain one, just start shelling upper shelling in the middle of that lower shell and there's a total of seven. So it's kind of funny I would start talking about a possible error you can have and yet I'm doing it right on camera. <laughs> Whoops. Not keeping it real right. Crochet is not about being perfect. It's about knowing when to improvise. Okay so you have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then come to the single crochets and keep on going. So by turning it back and forth you're getting that texture look on your bag. So what I want you to do now that you understand this is that I want you to continue up the bag. So let's bring back that bag and then we're gonna continue along the top. So here's the bag again. So you're going to have your half color right in the beginning and then solids and solids. So you're gonna have five and a half of the cream color of the first color and then you're going to have five of the other color in between. You're going to finish off and you're going to have this top. So what I'm going to do now is that we're going to start you up and we're going to get this uh, top band done. There's only one round to do left here. We have handles and then I'm gonna turn it over and then do the base. So let's, uh, I'm gonna leave this with you. So get this all the way to the top here and uh, I think this is around, I, th I was trying to think how long this was but I, uh, I think it's about, about 12 inches 
is what that is. So it's actually not uh, too bad and I think it's quite awesome. So let's uh, start at the top of the bag and do your final round at the top. So as I start the top band I'm going to concentrate on where I finished as being my starting point. So you can, you're gonna notice there's no seam lines on this thing. So I can pretty much start anywhere but I'm just gonna be consistent and you will notice that I haven't determined what is the flat side of the bag yet because it's completely just a round tube. So what I'm gonna do is start at the top and let's zoom you in and show you how to do the extended pico round for this round. So let's grab our blue, our aqua color and let's start exactly where we finished off than here. So I'm kind of predictable in so many ways. Um, some designers start liking doing the same things over and over and I really like the Pico edging. I discovered it on one of the stitch alongs uh, a few years back. Um, it was actually on one of E.D. Ekman's uh, designs and I just love this particular stitch. It just is a way to finish off and not look so manicured at the end. It just looks amazing. So I want you to go into the stitch that you're going and I'm looking at the right side of the project. So I'm looking at the outside of the bag. So we would have finished on the right side of this because it was the upper wheel. So we're continuing then to go in the same direction. So let's attach chain one and single crochet into the same one. And now we're going to do a pico. So one, two, three and see these two strands? I want you to slide the hook in behind them. Okay and then yarning over pulling it through and through and then single crochet into the next stitch available to you. We're gonna do this again. So single crochet in the next one, then a pico. So one, two, three and then slide it into those two strands on the top. Let me just zoom that in. So I'm just gonna pull through and through. So that's a slip stitch and then single crochet into the next. So this is happening over two stitches and you can see that it takes a nice manicured look. If you, if you like the manicured look then don't bother to do this. But if you like it to be a little more artistic you can do that. So single crochet into the next then pico. So one, two, three. Slide in behind the two strands that you see there. And pull through and through and then single crochet in the next. And you're gonna do that all the way around. Now because you're going up and down these hills it's gonna look really kind of a neat shape. So please do that all the way around. This is the extended pico single crochet stitch. So I'm coming all the way back around and because you had an even number of stitches because it was in multiples of 10 this is working on the power of two. So you have two stitches left so that's it. So we're just gonna finish this off and then we're gonna weave in our ends. I'm gonna show you how to do that because I'm only show you once and then just finish off. So just single crochet in the last one and then just join it to the beginning single crochet. So now just cut your yarn and then using a darning needle or tapestry needle. I always call it darning needle. I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> You'd think after 10 years of filming this stuff. I would call it by its proper name but it is a tapestry needle. <laughs> Until tomorrow when I call it something, <laughs> the darning needle again. I keep thinking of socks. I think I'm old. So I'm just going to fold it up on the inside of the bag. So I'm looking at the good side. This is the good side. So I want to keep on the inside and I want to travel. Now this is like a cord. So I just want to travel on the inside of this. So go through once and you're gonna notice it's nice and strong and then go back in the other direction through a different section. This is twice and when I go to pull it I don't wanna pull it to the point I'm warping the project. So just let it sit comfortably and then go back one more time. Third time is a charm through a slightly different path. If you go in the exact same path it all falls out when you go to pull it through. Gonna fluff it up and adjust, and now I can just safely trim it down into the project and then get rid of any stragglers that you may see. So we now have the top done, and we're now going to move then to the base of the bag. So you can see it's kind of nicely done at the top here, and let's begin to do the base. 
So with looking at the right side of the project, the good side, you got this nice idea at the top. Let's turn it over. So just turn it around and now we're gonna look at the bottom side of the bag and this is where I started here. Just happens to be right where my hand grabbed it. So it's complete fluke. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start off with the slip knot on the hook and we're gonna go around but we're gonna do uh, a decrease as we go around. So attaching to the first one, pull through, chain one and single crochet. So we want a single crochet a total of eight in a row. So that was considered one. So moving to the next one, so you got two and three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once you get your eight, I want you to put the next two together. So just yarning over, pulling through, and next one pulling through, and then pull through two. Okay, so let's review that one more time. So the next eight in a row are, are by themselves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then the next two are together. So in, through, in the next one, and through, and pull through all three loops. So please do that all the way around. So eight, and then two together, eight and two together. So I'm coming back around the final two stitches are two together and that's just because I'm keeping count and technically they are. Um, I didn't have to do anything in order to do that so I actually have my counts right. <laughs> it's a miracle. So let's uh, just uh, slip stitch to the beginning. So now the final round of the base here is that we're going to decrease again. So we're gonna chain up one and the first two in a row will be single crochets and then the next two are two together. And you're gonna repeat that going all the way around. So the next two are by themselves so one and two and then the next two are together. And I want you to do that same thing going all the way around for this round. So coming up all the way back around and the final uh, just attaching to, sorry with the slip stitch to the beginning. So what I want you to do is that I want you to cut a long enough strand here so that you can use that to sew the base together. So let's talk a little bit about that because if you do have a seam line which I don't but if you do have a seam line you're going to want to pay attention and put the seam line so it's on the edge of the bag. So let's just say here where I'm finishing off because it was pretty much close to where it was as I'm just going to fold it in half and I want this to be my seam line. So I wanna look at the base, I wanna look at the bag itself. Do I see any seam lines here? Nope, I don't. And do I see any here? Nope, I don't. So where I'm about to start is satisfactory for me. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to whip stitch the base of the bag together. So this will now define what is the flat side of the bag. So just using your tapestry needle, look at that, I used that name right for the first time ever. So you're gonna do that and I want to start off on the edge and I prefer to move, I'm, I'm right handed so I prefer to move from right to left going in to the set, stitch on the one side and into the stitch on the other and go straight across. This is called the whip stitch and I want to advance one stitch across. So come to the first side and then go to the next side. So it's the next available stitch for both sides and just coming across And, and whip stitch those together. Pull it nice and tight. This is strong yarn. That's why we're using it for bags. And just continue to whip stitch this nicely together. So please do that all the way across. So I'm coming up near to the other side. I'm just matching the stitches as you know. And I'm just gonna come right into that last section here. Now it's a nice line here so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just weave it in to some strands and I want to just stay underneath the stitches and cut them pop out and then going back so I want to make sure I don't warp anything and going back in the other direction through a slightly different path 
so that it catches those fibers in a position. I'm trying to stay through gapping spaces of this particular yarn because this yarn is actually knit. It's like a knit tube. And so once you start trying to go through that tube it gets a little more dicey. Like meaning see how I'm going right through some partial stitches it gets kind of dicey in there. So, so third time is a charm and then that's it. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna move on to the handles. It's my standard handles that I love and we're going to continue with that next. So now we're gonna continue. I've already done my handles off camera. I like my handles to all be the same for my particular projects that I design. I, I just like that there are five single crochets back and forth and the sixth one you rotate them uh, so that the two sides come together to create a, like a tube shape. It's great to hold on to and my standard number is 100 chains in order to do that. So when I go to start. So it's long enough for you to wrap over your shoulder if you're uh, a crocheter on the go and it looks really quite good. So let's uh, begin to do the handles next. So I like to use the same size hook that I'm doing with the bag. So in this case it's a six and a half millimeter size uh, uh, K crochet hook but I've done smaller bags where I'm using a four millimeter size G. But I still use the same chain count for both of those bags. So all you're just gonna do is chain 100. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 and go all the way to 100 put me on hold here now and then start me back up then when you have a hundred. For those that are ready to continue you're gonna go second chain from the hook get the back hump of the chain and I want you to single crochet back across your chain and the back hump only of just going back all the way across. I really like this type of bag handle because it's just something you can do in front of the TV. I think once you get the first chain covered which I'm doing right now you can just safely just crochet in front of the TV and not have to really you don't have to really think about it. So you only have to count really the first time in order to get that right chain count the first time. So once you get to the end just go into the very last one. So this is one row of five that you just completed. So you're gonna turn your work and start the second row. So chain up one and go into the same one and single crochet in that one plus all of its friends all the way down your row. And then this would be row number two of five that you want to complete. So do you get how it's easy it is? So you can see the rotation of the handle is not in there yet because we don't do that until the sixth pass where we put the end um, row and the first row together. So then turn your work, chain one, single crochet again. So this is the third. So what I want you to do is get your five rows complete and then meet you back here in just a moment. Once you get your five rows complete you can actually count them. So one, two, three, four, five. Now you're gonna start your sixth one. You don't chain first. You just go immediately go into the first stitch and then fold it up and get the first stitch on the other side and lay down the straggler inside the handle and just double crochet those two together. So advancing to the next stitch on the first side and then jumping over to the next stitch on the other side. So once you get a few of these you can just kind of fold it in half in your hand like I'm doing right now and just immediately going in on the one side and then in on the other side. So just putting them together. So you're gonna do this all the way down the handle of your bag and then you end up with a nice gripping motion in order for you to, to have that. And it's a really kind of a neat idea as well. And then that's it. So that's as simple as it gets and uh, then you just fasten off and then you're good to go and then attach it to your project. So now you have a tube like formation that you have for your bag handle. So make sure you get your two handles done and I have two done here and what I want to do is that I, I did these in white. I want to attach in the white section. So if you do this in a certain way you can kind of follow it along. So what's gonna happen is that you see four wheels here one, two, three, four and you see four wheels in the back. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to kind of pay attention to where the seam line is going up on this bag and then just kind of manipulate it so that the handles make complete sense to where they are in the top of the bag. 
So once I get that done I'm going to start with the inside of this of the first handle. So I left on a long strand on the end of the one. So what, all I'm just gonna do is that I'm just going to attach it with the darning needle or with the, see the tapestry needle and you're going to attach it to the inside of the bag. I do not want you to attach it to anywhere in the blue section. So leave that blue alone. So just concentrate on the upper part of the shell and then go right through the project. Now because you're using white and the wheels are white on the other side you can go right through the project without really a lot of notice on the other side. So just going all the way through. Okay and then from the back side come forward back through the handle on the other side. So what I want you to do is that I want you to go across and then up a little bit so that you stay within the white and then back across the middle. So just going across, up and then back across and that will attach your handles. Once you get that done then I want you to place it to the other side that you have. Okay so eye it up, make sure that it's gonna match and then attach it. So watch that middle seam line in the middle and then turn the bag over once you're done that and then just do the other side that you have and I want you to attach all four. Now when you get one handle done I want you to uh, finish it off the same way dragging your needle in and out three times and then you're good to go and that's how you're going to attach your handle today. So my bag is now complete. I have my handles sewn on just like we see extra long handles here for generosity to put over your shoulder and this is the good to go. So this is the textured wheel uh, bag, a complement pattern and a diagram that is available with this. So please enjoy and have a good one and we hope to see your creativity online really soon. We'll see ya. Bye bye.